There are many paths into the world of cybersecurity, and beyond those, even more that branch up into different specializations and subject areas. If you're like me and find the ever-expanding world of web applications and services interesting, then here are three great career options for you. Today, we're going to talk about some of the major roles in web application security, figure out what the differences are between them, and hopefully find out where you want to be. I'll also give you some insights into how to get started and be successful at each. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have questions, then swing by our AppSec live stream every Tuesday. And without further ado, let's dive on in. So let's start with an overview. What do each of these roles actually do in their day to day? Of course, your mileage may vary and job descriptions and titles can be wildly different. But let's start with web app pen testing. This is where you conduct an assessment on a web application and find as many weaknesses and vulnerabilities within a given time frame. So likely your activities will look like pre-engagement, figuring out the scope and the timing of your pen test mapping out the application and carrying out a lot of enumeration, working through the application logic and features, identifying risky functionality and finding potentially hidden endpoints, and of course, testing your common attacks against everything that you find. You write up a report of the findings at the end and provide recommendations. Now, I've cut this down a little bit to just be like the basic high level steps and your tests will likely include some scanning tools and occasionally code review as well. Now, a lot of network penetration testers also do this kind of pen testing, which is awesome. And I think the market for penetration testers is still growing and the demands for skilled testers is high, though the competition has also been on the rise. So let's take a look at bug bounty. Somewhat similar to web app pen testing, though with bug bounty, it's more of a choose your own adventure kind of deal. During a pen test, you have the responsibility to cover the entire scope and provide a report. With bug bounty, you decide what to hunt for and where. Recon, enumeration, discovery, application mapping, whatever you want to call it, is still going to be really important here. But beyond that, typically bug bounty hunters will take one of two routes. The first approach might be testing or scanning for simple vulnerabilities like CVEs and XSS in Swagger UI and, and things like this. The second would be looking a little bit deeper at the specific application, looking at the logic, the behavior, and vulnerabilities might require a chain of issues to exploit. Personally, my approach looks like this. I look at mapping the application in terms of logic and functionality and try to understand what it does and why. What is the intention behind the application? I thoroughly test authentication and authorization. This is where I find most of my critical issues because it's what I like to test for. You can find simple issues like IDOR, Insecure Direct Object Reference, and BOLA, Broken Object Level Authorization, but also more complex attacks too against things like session tokens. Now beyond this, I tend to look for business logic issues and if I'm able to abuse the functionality of the application, though this is always a double-edged sword since a lot of the time when you find a vulnerability in some specific functionality, the team will just claim it as a feature. I'm also usually on the lookout for server-side request forgery as I prefer testing API-driven applications. And then I might do a pass of injection attacks. So I might look for cross-site scripting, SQL injection, external entities, etc. But it really depends on the targets. In my opinion, there's no real right or wrong way to do bug bounty. So just do what's right for you. Now let's move on to application security engineering, which is more my background. And personally, I really love this field. It's very exciting and rewarding, and it can be tough at times, especially when dealing with people who don't want their application scrutinized or maybe don't have time to fix the vulnerabilities or issues that you've identified. But often you get to go really deep and understand what's happening under the hood. And these insights are definitely helpful from a long-term learning perspective. The responsibilities of an AppSec engineer though are quite varied and quite different from organization to organization. So when you're applying for roles like this, make sure to ask, what does the day-to-day -day look like? What projects will you be working on? And what teams will you likely be working with? Typical tasks might include defining and helping implement a secure development lifecycle. This could include integrating tools or defining secure development practices carrying out threat modeling exercises, code review and pen testing applications, researching new vulnerabilities and testing or providing guidance and mitigation for teams to follow, designing or reviewing system architecture, 
or even reviewing bug bounty or pen test findings so that they can be resolved. It's more of a continuous in-house role where you'll be involved in many parts of the development lifecycle, not just right at the end for testing. But that does mean that you get a chance to go really deep on the technology stack that's being used. So which is right for you? Well, I can't really answer that for you, but in the end, lean into the one that gives you the most enjoyment or the one that you think sounds most interesting. The path into each of these roles is quite similar because a lot of the skills overlap and whilst you don't have to follow a specific path, there are some things that I recommend you learn that will really help you out. So getting the basics down, really you need to understand how applications work and we won't go into too much detail on how to do that here, but you can check out the early stages of this video, which has some good resources on getting started with learning the fundamentals. Next up, learning about common web application weaknesses and attacks against web applications. Common weaknesses could be mistakes like missing cookie headers, and while scanners will pick this up, you need to be able to justify it in your report and also provide remediation. And of course, you need to be good at attacking web applications. This takes a lot of practice, so get yourself through things like the Portswiggers Web Security Academy, and maybe look at Pentester Lab or the Practical API Hacking course as well. After this, try and get as much hands-on practice as you can. There are so many platforms available now and support material to go along with it, so there's no excuse not spending lots of time attacking web applications troubleshooting and learning as you go. Now, if you want to be a web app pen tester, definitely check out the OWASP testing guidelines, get familiar with them. And if you want to and need the practice, carry out a pen test on something like a hack the box machine and treat it like a real life engagement. For bug bounty, consider what approach you want to take. Do you want to automate and cover a large surface area and find lots of things quickly? Or do you want to go deeper into manual testing and find more critical but rare issues. And finally, for AppSec engineering, I think there is a little bit more emphasis on development skills and automation. For that, I definitely recommend spending a little bit more time getting some basic programming down and also getting comfortable with reading code. Also, there's nothing stopping you deploying some small web applications and going through the process of automating deployments. Things like this will really help you when you step into an application security role and you're working closely with developers, DevOps, sysadmins, etc. Now, time to run through some of my favorite resources. Of course, to start with, Portswigger Web Security Academy and check out the Odin project if you want to develop some programming skills. You could also consider building some small web apps or a CTF to practice as well. After that, move on to Try Hack Me, work through some of the relevant paths, and of course, take on some easy CTFs. And optionally, you could work through a course that looks exciting or interests you. At this point, you should consider getting at least one certification done, and you should start applying for entry-level roles or actively working on bug bounty. One final thing that we haven't really touched on though, is improving your soft skills. Now, if you're practicing for an interview, then using the Feynman technique where you take a topic, explain it out loud in your own words as though you were teaching it to someone else, and then you go ahead and review your explanation. If you feel like your explanation is a little off, then check your notes and try again. This is particularly useful for common questions that appear like things about the OWASP top 10 and common vulnerabilities. And really there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to clearly explain SQL injection, cross-site scripting, cross-site request forgery, server-side request forgery to anyone, both technical or non-technical, as well as the remediation for those things as well. And of course, don't neglect your report writing skills. I know not everyone feels the same way, but for me, I quite like writing reports. It's a bit of a change of pace and I can put some music on, zone out and get it done. There's some great material on this in the PEH course. And of course, Heath has covered this topic many times on live stream and in YouTube videos. So go check those out if you want to. So that's it for this video, a little bit different to my usual technical walkthroughs, but of course I get a lot of questions about the differences between these roles during our live streams and also on Discord as well. So I hope this helps you all out. If you have a favorite resource that will help someone step into one of these roles, then definitely leave it down in the comments below. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.